Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Wildcraft Dyeing. We are going to be dyeing with carrot tops and we're going to be showing you how to do five different colors from the same pot. You can either grow your own in your garden or in pots or get yours from the grocery store just like I did. I'm so excited to start. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is pick up carrots and make sure that the tops are intact. Uh, often with carrots, they trim the top, at least world, in the part of the world that I am from, um, and those are no good. You can't die with the bottom of the carrots. You might think you can get an orange from them, but you cannot get a stable orange from the bottom of the carrots. We just want the tops. Um, and also when you're thinking about how much carrots, if you're picking them up or growing them, you're looking for a five to one dye ratio. What I mean is, let's say if you're working in pounds, for every pound of fiber that you want to dye, you want to get five pounds of fresh tops. Now, that might sound like a lot, but don't forget a lot of those tops um, still have water in them. The process is fairly straightforward. You want to trim the tops, and then I gave them an extra chop so they could fit into the bowl. I wanted to make sure that I could measure them in terms of the weight. Um, and the other thing you want to keep in mind, if you're going for that five to one ratio, or any ratio is you want to weigh them before you rinse them if you rinse them and you're going to get sort of that a lot of the dirt and crap out which is great um, but that water from the rinsing is going to boost those numbers and it's going to weaken your color if you're uh, using like that five to one ratio but so much of it is that extra water so definitely try and weigh them as dry as possible um, to help make sure that you're getting that real five to one ratio. Now, you might be wondering what your ratio would be if you dry your top. Sometimes you will get materials in and it's not the right time for you to go forward and dyeing with it for whatever reason, and you wanna use it later in the season. You can dry carrot tops to dye with later. They will lose a little bit of their brightness, but you will still get good solid yellows from them. If you are drying them, they're gonna lose weight because the water has been taken out of them. And you're looking at then, I would probably dye between a one to one to two to one ratio, which means for every pound of fiber, you want a pound of dried tops. Now those ratios will give you deep, solid, lovely colors. You can obviously lessen that ratio if you have less material. So just prior to washing the tops, it's now time to weigh them. And so I have two identical Tupperware containers. I'm tearing the weight. I'm making sure that the, the weight that I have on my scale does not include the weight of the Tupperware. And at the end, it's 169 grams. At this stage, I've rinsed it, I've dried it, and I've just chopped it up. I always recommend chopping up uh, to help increase that surface area to get more dye out. So in this video, I do wanna show you how to get five different colors from the carrot tops. We're gonna to start this first round of dyeing though with three skeins. All three of these were pre-mordanted with alum. Pre-mordant just means that the wool was heated with a metal, in this case, alum, which is aluminum potassium sulfate, for one hour at 12% weight of fiber. So the weight of the fiber, 12% of that total, um, is dissolved in a pot with the wool and then heated for an hour. If you want more information on how to mordant, uh, I would check out the video I did on dyeing with acorns. I go through it step by step. In this case, with alum and mordanting, the wool comes out the same color it goes goes in, which is, uh, in this case, two white skeins, and that's a natural gray wool. Now, if I'm dyeing a small amount of wool, I'll often use this double boiler method, which is just to put the jar into the pot instead of dyeing with the whole pot. Another thing I like using are these paint mesh bags. I talk about them a lot on my channel. I just find them easier to dye with. So if you put your carrot tops into this mesh bag, now if you don't have a bag, you don't need to use them. I dislike them because when it's done cooking, I can yank the bag and the carrot tops out right into the, empty the bag into the composter and we're ready to go. Now these bags come in two different different sizes in a one gallon or five gallon size. I believe this is the five gallon. I use it for this extra long uh, old pickle jar, which I quite enjoy using for dyeing. Um, and then once you've got that all in place, uh, you're gonna add your water. You can add hot water or warm water. 
um, and fill obviously the jar up pretty much the top if you're using if you're doing a larger amount of fiber and you're doing the pot itself you can fill that about two-thirds full of water you want enough water that your um, dye material can cook evenly and that your yarn can cook um, or dye um, and be able to move around freely so that's just what we're doing now we're going to fill the pot fill the jar and then we'll take it over to the stove in order to simmer it let's talk carrot history Carrots actually originated in Persia in what is now Iran and Afghanistan as Dacus karata, which were cultivated and spread across Europe and southwestern Asia as a food crop, mostly for their aromatic leaves and seeds. In carrots, the stems, the leaves, and the taproot are all edible, though historically the taproot was smaller and more bitter. These days, it's been domesticated as Dacus karata subspecies sativus, and almost exclusively just the taproot is harvested. This is a biennial plant in the Apiaceae family. Now, the first recorded use of the word in English is in 1530, though carrots were white and not easily distinguishable from their cousin, the parsnip. Carrots have been used as food crop for several thousand years, though mainly for the seeds and the leaves. It was the Moors in the 8th century that introduced the carrot to Spain. Okay, back to the stove top. At this stage, what we really want is to have those carrot tops simmer, which is about 80 degrees Celsius or about 155 degrees Fahrenheit on the stove for one hour. That cooking, that simmering down allows those dye molecules to get into the dye pot. And here, I thought we could take a break while we have that hour simmering away to cook the carrots. And if you've never roasted carrots before, I'm sure many of you have. I just did a basic recipe where I'm peeling them and then I chop them and I'm going to roast them with olive oil and salt and pepper. This was a great option for me. Normally when I'm dying, I, can't, I don't get to eat or participate in that aspect. Uh, so the fact that I could take something and make a dish, a side dish for dinner as well as dying was pretty great. Um, it made me think about some of the people I've read about with dying do something called a dine and dinner where you cook a meal based on the having leftovers that you're then going to die with. And as amazing as that sounds, I have to tell you, if I'm going to cook a big dinner, the last thing I'm going to want to do is head back in the kitchen with the dirty dishes and die with it. But I did like the idea of going away for the weekend. That was appealing where you're going to go away and maybe you're going to cook one night and then the next day you're going to do all of the dying and hanging out and possibly opening up some wine. That is a very appealing idea as kind of a dying getaway weekend. I could definitely do that. And at this stage, it's just a matter of getting your chopped up carrots onto the cooking sheet and you're going to cook at 425 for about 20 minutes for a delicious fresh roasted carrots while that's done our hour is now up and as you can see the carrot tops have cooked down they're more of a silvery color and they've sunk down into the water instead of floating um, and at this stage, I just take them out. And now you can see the power of having that bag um, is just the dye pot is now ready. Now, the fiber I had soaking on the side, you always want to soak it because it just allows it to sink right into the pot. And one of the reasons we did gray is if you're dyeing yellow dye and you, add, you start with gray, um, you'll actually end up with more of a green color. So it's kind of like an easy straightforward way of just adding one more color is if you just start with the gray wool um, and then you add yellow on top. So I've added the three and I'll show you why we did two identical yellow ones um, later on, but I have the three in and now I've started doing this more and more. I've added the, the bag back again. And now it's cooked for about the one hour mark. It's really, really hot, so we're gonna let it cool. But as you can see, we got some beautiful yellows. I'll pop the lid on and leave overnight. Now the carrots are ready 20 minutes later and they're nice and crispy and I'm going to serve those up to my family. Just give me a second. It's going to be a carrot stop. Nom, nom, nom.
Now it is the next morning and the yarn has cooled beautifully overnight. Now if you don't have a full night to leave it to cool, you can take it out after a couple of hours, but you should try and get it a little bit cooler just because big temperature shifts are not good for the yarn and it can felt and become sticky to work with. Now here we go. We should have two identical yellows. We're going to take one of those and shift it and I'll show you how now. And that's the one green that started out as gray. Um, and now has shifted into the greens. So there's two colors. Now we're gonna take one of these and I'm gonna show you what happens if you use a metal afterwards. Now, if you use a metal beforehand like alum, or there's another one which is iron or ferrous sulfate, if you use iron ahead of time, expose the yarn, you're gonna get a brown. But if you do it afterwards, we call this a post dye dip or a modifier. Using iron afterwards, here's our sorry, sulfate, afterwards, um, in a small glass jar, as you can see, I use about a heaping teaspoon. Um, it's going to be quite strong of a solution. You're not going to want to leave your yarn in it for long because iron is very hard on wool. But creating a concentrated iron solution, and we're going to dip one of the yellow in there for five minutes, and we're going to set the alarm for five minutes. What that does is it allows the yellow to shift into a green. Now, different materials shift better than others. Carrot tops will shift into a green. Another thing like buckwheat, uh, not buckwheat, um, buckthorn, uh, buckthorn shifts really, really well into green. That's one of my favorites. But as you can see, we've created the iron solution. We've popped it in. We're going to set the alarm for five minutes. And over that five minutes, that bright yellow is going to shift into a uh, green. So we have one green with the gray wool. We've got a yellow. And now we've got that third color that we are getting through using iron as a modifier. Now, when it comes to rinsing your yarn, there's two things to keep in mind. One is temperature. You wanna be rinsing it at the same general temperature. And the second thing I would mention is you wanna rinse until the water runs clear. We're gonna get our second round of colors. This time we're gonna do two skeins. One has been pre-mordanted with iron. Now, when we used it, in the previous section of video, it was as a modifier. This time we're using it as a mordant. We've already exposed the wool to the iron, which is why it's dark. And the second one is alum mordanted, just like the first round. But we're gonna get a paler yellow because this round is now what's called the first exhaust. Once you are dying with a pot you've already dyed in, you have now exhaust rounds. So we're gonna get a paler yellow, but still a decent yellow. And the iron mordanted one, which is right now is a tan, is gonna go a darker color into the browns. So we're gonna get a brown and a paler yellow and all together we should get about five colors. Now we're gonna treat this round exactly like the last one, which is we're gonna soak the yarn, we're gonna put it in the jar, we're gonna put the bag on top, but still leave the yarn room to move around so that we get an even color, and we're gonna put it back on the stove and heat for one hour. All right, for this next step, you are going to want gloves. And I'm just gonna recap how to use a modifier. We're gonna get a jar or a vat, you're going to add water. We're going to add that iron in a nice concentrated fashion. Uh, this is a heaping teaspoon and stirring it up, dissolving all that iron. It's going to smell like a rusty car part. Um, now you're going to add your yarn. We're going to leave it for five minutes. And when it comes time to rinse it, this is why you want your gloves because iron can, isn't just hard on wool. It can also be hard in your skin. As you can see, that yellow after that five minutes has shifted into more of a almost a limey green. I wouldn't say this is as big a jump into green as some of the other yellow dyers, for example, buckthorn that I mentioned earlier, but it is definitely a shift into the greens. Okay, let's talk about the results from that first round of dyeing that we did. We have one bright yellow, which is mordanted with alum, the limey green that was done with alum and then modified with iron, and then the yarn that was originally gray that has now shifted into a gray green. So those are our three distinct colors. Now we're gonna go back to the pot and pull out our second round, or also what's known as our first exhaust bath. All right, we're ready to see the results for our first exhaust bath. We have simmered it for the hour. I've pulled the bag, that could now be cold and put into the compost. And I'm gonna pull out our second round of colors. In this case, 
we did get more of a medium brown than a dark brown not too surprising because it's the exhaust bath and then a very beautiful pale yellow as always be careful with the temperature let it cool down if you can and here we go so that's more of that darker tan and there is that bright beautiful yellow so even though it was the exhaust bath it still came out a lovely shade and here we go here are our results we got five different shades which can now be used in this in this case in a weaving project but you can also use it in knitting crocheting whatever you like thank you so much for tuning in this was a great experiment i'm definitely going to be using it again it was so much fun to combine dyeing and cooking today thanks everyone like and subscribe for more videos